Thank you, David. Delighted to be back here in Frankfurt. It's the uh, first time in about three years, and thank you very much to Farms Forum team for putting this conference together and giving me the opportunity to speak. The focus of my presentation today is on private debt, but in the context of global real estate markets. Before I kick off, I just wanted to share just a one slider um, to give some background to our experience. Pigeon Real Estate is a global investment manager, as many of you know, but we have 140 years plus of real estate lending experience, and that's scattered across three regional businesses with over 30 offices worldwide. I mean, in total, we're managing over 5,500 properties uh, equating to an AUM of more than 200 billion. I wanted to start with this slide because I'm covering global real estate markets and to demonstrate that I'm looking at these markets through the lens of our, our regional businesses, which gives me an advantage when I'm sat in London at home that I could connect to all my colleagues around the world. I wanted to start off with size. It's an important question, and it's one that we're asked very frequently. How big are the debt markets? Are they niche? And we often get asked this question from people outside of the real estate industry, especially those that are invested into other debt markets. Well, you're just a very tiny real estate debt market. Well, how tiny are we? Well, in the US, we're almost four trillion. Trillion, not billion. So we're not really that small. Europe, okay, arguably a bit smaller, about half the size of the US, but that's still over $200 trillion worth a market. For Asia Pacific, I wanted to focus here just on Australia being the most um, developed real estate debt market of them all. And Australia equates to about $275 billion. And that's on par with the size of the UK debt markets, on par with the size of France, and on par with the size of Germany. So actually, Australia is talked about far less, but as a market size, it equates to the three largest markets in Europe. It's not all about size, of course. There are unique aspects in each market. And I wanted to home in here on Europe and Australia, where you see that solid dark blue occupying the majority of my donut charts. And it means that most of the real estate lending that is done in Europe and Australia is still dominated by the banking industry. Why it's super important is that whatever impacts the banking industry has a huge impact on our commercial real estate debt market. So if banks are constrained in certain ways, that has a big effect on Europe and Australia more so than United States. But equally, if banks are loosened up in some way, that also has a much bigger effect. In the United States,